Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Teed Helimetz, and I'm a principal dancer with the San Francisco Ballet. And uh, I'm super excited to be here today because I'm going to be able to tell you the story of Nutcracker, and I'm going to draw it all out for you. And um, so this was something that we always did in my family. We had, I was very fortunate. I had a really talented uncle who would throw these kind of stories, and I just, I just really want to share it with you. It's super fun. OK, so let's get rid of all of this first. And let's think about a little bit about the Nutcracker story. Um, so I will get it all out of nice and clean so that we don't have any smudges here. And so our Nutcracker story takes place in San Francisco. And it is Christmas Eve. And Drossermeyer, he's sometimes he's uh, he's also called Uncle Drossermeyer. Um, is just working away in his toy shop. So let's just uh, let's just draw Uncle Drossermeyer. What does he sort of look like? Let's figure this out. Well, he's old, and let's have him sort of just right here. Let's put him right here. And he is just here, and he has a white hair, and he has bushy white eyebrows, sort of like Santa, I would say. And um, and he's just looking down because he's he's concentrating very hard, and he has a, a lovely white beard. And you can sort of see that he's kind of smiling. But there's just something mysterious about him because his left eye has a patch. And we don't quite really know why. So there's a certain mystery about him. He's lived life, yeah? And it just, the patch just goes right behind his ear. And he has this really super fun, bushy white hair that just goes all around here. And he often wears this very high collar and all sorts of fancy cloaks. <clears throat> and he's working away on this magical Nutcracker doll. And I don't know if you've ever seen Nutcracker doll, but Nutcracker dolls have like this really strong jaws and they open up and they just crack whatever you put between their teeth. And um, so he's working on a magical Nutcracker doll. And he is just, we can see his arm sort of going like this nicely here. And he's holding something. And what he's holding is, this is, this is our San Francisco version of Nutcracker. So he looks maybe a little bit different from what maybe you all have seen. So, he has a quite a, like a large nose, and he has a fun hat on, and it has like a lovely little star on it. There we go. And he has quite large eyes, beautiful big eyes right there. There we go. And a lovely mustache. And the hair is just sort of poking out from the side here. But the most impressive part is he has impressive set of teeth, very large, really big, and a nice mustache is coming out right from here. So he has this kind of a roundish head. And he has this light. This little shoulder patches. And Uncle Drossenmeyer is really excited because he has been working for a while with this nutcracker. And let's just make him like see that he's holding this doll with special care because he's so excited to 
share this toll with other people. And he's sort of standing on the, let's put him on a stand. So that's Uncle Drosselmeyer just has worked away. And he is actually heading to a special Christmas party, Christmas Eve party to Stahlbaum's house. They have invited him over. He is uh, a great guest of theirs. And uh, the Stahlbaums have two children, one um, a little, uh, little girl, uh, older girl and uh, a younger boy. And the girl's name is Clara and the boy's name is Fritz. And so <clears throat> as he's worked away on this Nutcracker doll, let's just make it make sense so that you can see his hands are just sort of working, working away here. Um, and he's going to, he packs everything quickly up and um, he's heading to town. And he's gonna go past some familiar sights as he's walking into the town. So he's gonna go past, I'm sure this rings the bell maybe to some people. Just there's this stack of houses here and it's on a slanted ill. And these houses have like these really awesome windows everywhere. And they look really beautiful. Some of them might have some balconies here and can see them just stacked up and they all look slightly different but kind of similar and there is a doorway here and there was staircase leading up to the doorways there we go and and we see Uncle Drossenmeyer just as a shadow because he's now very, very far away. And he's walking with his pushy hair and he actually has a big bag of gifts over his shoulder, kind of like Santa. Yeah, and he's just carrying that big bag and he has this floating cloak. Oh, he almost sort of looks like a Batman, but he's not a Batman, no, no, no. It's Uncle Drossenmeyer for sure, I guarantee you. Okay, and this looks like the Painted Ladies. I'm sure you've seen it in San Francisco. And usually they're all different colors, but let's make them something really fun. Like let's change them. Let's, let's make this one a purple one and add some nice little detail to this painted ladies. And let's make this one a red one. Let's make a nice little red. There we go. It's a quite a hill that he has to climb. And eventually he does arrive at uh, Stahlbaum's house. And everybody's so excited to see him. And as he arrives inside the house, there is a, a beautiful Christmas tree here. Lovely Christmas tree in the center of the room in the house. It's huge, it's a big tree. And, as, and of course this tree is decorated with something that's really unusual for that time. It's decorated with electric lights. So they're not candle lights, they're electric lights because this is, this is 1915 and so they have electric lights on the tree. Maybe there is some star on the top of the tree like this and some other ornaments that, that the family has collected through the years. And we see in the back of the tree, there's the big, big bay window and Lovely window coverings there. Nice little window shelf here. Lovely window coverings here. And from here, there's a big staircase coming down. Like this. 
It's little, it's like a nice little curved staircase. It's just coming down from here. All the way from the top. And this is where the guests arrive. They just walk down the staircase and this is the beautiful tree here and there's a window and and everybody arrives here in the living room and there are some gifts here underneath the tree because there's always gifts underneath the tree let's just make some other gifts there we go so some boxes some are really small and some are big and <clears throat> As he, as the Drosselmeyer arrives at the party, um, Clara is really excited to meet him because she knows that every year he does all sorts of tricks with his toys. And um, let's just draw Clara. It's exciting to just see what Clara looks like. So Clara is... Uh, She's just standing right here. I'm going to just draw her right here. And, and she's, and Uncle Drosselmeyer is showing all the guests these magical toys that he's been working on. And one of them is a Jack in a Box toy. And one of them is a dancing ballerina toy. And one of them is the Nutcracker toy. And what he does with the Nutcracker toy is, is he puts him inside a big box and now Krakadoy is this big, he puts him in and he does some magic, magic, magic and out comes a real huge life-size Nutcracker toy. And everybody's so surprised and the Nutcracker toy does this brave little war dance and jumps back in a box and out comes again a really tiny Nutcracker. And Clara just loved loved this nutcracker doll so much so she was begging please please may i play with with him and of course uncle drossemeyer is always so nice and he said absolutely so let's draw clara dancing with the nutcracker doll and clara is right here and let's just draw her in a profile and she's got a smile on her face and she's smiling here and looking down at this Absolutely beautiful Nakrakadol doll that he, she was so happy to play with. And she has got a little bow in her hair. Beautiful black hair. And she's all dressed up. And she's holding this. Nutcracker doll. How did we do this? We did it. Started with the nose. We did with the nose. So I'm going to have to draw it a little bit smaller. He's this right here. He's got that lovely mustache, big, powerful teeth. There we go. Oh, we got it. We got it. And then a nice hat. There we go. He's just right in her hands. He's quite big, as you can see, he's quite big. He's got these black boots on and everything. And she's so excited. She's just dancing around. With him. And, and I even think that maybe Clara is also so excited because she has been maybe taking some ballet lessons. And she also wants to like dance some of her ballet steps. And she has a lovely little ballet feet. So in ballet, we always stand like one leg behind us. It's a very balletic way to stand. So Clara is so excited to dance with the Nutcracker doll, but her brother Fritz gets a little jealous and he grabs the Nutcracker doll out of her hand. And because he was so violent with it, he actually breaks it. And 
Clara is extremely upset. And Dross, Uncle Drosselmeyer sees that and he says, Clara, please do not worry. I know exactly what to do. He just needs some, some time to heal. So he takes out a scarf, wraps it around Nutcracker. Let's just change this bit a little bit and hands the Nutcracker doll back to Clara. So let's wrap it nicely, this scarf that is probably magical around the Nutcracker doll. There we go. And, and he tells, tells Clara, do not worry, I guarantee you he's going to be fine. So they place Nutcracker doll besides the fireplace. The fireplace is right here on the side of the staircase. It's like right there, not right now, it's going to just be behind Clara. But this is a big, gorgeous fireplace. And it's right there on the back wall. And what they do is, and then maybe there is some little fire there. They place the Nutcracker doll besides the fireplace. So let's just, let's just draw him, him here. He's all ready to start healing. And he's standing there bravely with the scarf wrapped around him besides the fireplace. All right. And the evening draws to an end and everybody is really tired because um, it was a great, great evening and they saw all sorts of magic and Uncle Drosselmeyer says, I am so sorry uh, to Staubaum family and says, I have to go but um, I had a lovely time and, and he leaves. And Clara also says goodbye to, the, uh, to Uncle Drossenmeyer and also goes to bed. So then it's evening, evening time, late evening, quite late. And as the clock strikes 12 midnight, we see Clara actually coming downstairs to the living room and why is she coming downstairs to the living room is because she forgot that the nutcracker doll was besides the fireplace so she she picks up the nutcracker doll but because she's kind of tired she falls asleep on the living room sofa and as she's falling asleep she goes dreams about what happened to her and the amazing things that she saw at the party uncle dross and maya do and suddenly in her dream and it's really 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 strange suddenly smoke starts appearing the smoke just appears everywhere all this magic fog and smoke just starts appearing and she's very confused and and she's not sure what is happening but uncle drossemeyer arrives in her dream and he is making everything large and what do i mean by that he is making the whole entire room expanse so that the tree that was this big and looked okay, well, this tree just grew and grew and grew to ginormous, massive, humongous tree. And all the gifts below the tree were now massive, huge boxes
And Clara, as she just looked up the tree with such surprise, she's never seen anything like it. She was just standing right below the tree here, staring up at it. Her hair was still in a bow. And she just had her arms out because she just never seen anything this magical before. And she was wearing her nightgown. I believe it's blue color, blue colored nightgown like this. And she was just standing there. And as she was just looking at marveling at this unbelievably beautiful tree, she heard some rustling. She didn't understand what was going on, what was happening. And suddenly, somebody was crawling up from underneath the tree. Now, who could that be? It was a mouse. And they were just kind of looking up at her and just saying, hey, what you doing here? And there were a lot of mouse, mice everywhere. And she got really scared. And what's, what happened then was something really unusual. Because everything in the room grew really fast, somebody else also grew quite large. And that, of course, is the Nutcracker doll. He grew very large and he said to Clara, do not worry, I will protect you. And Clara was so shocked because he was walking and talking and she was very, very overwhelmed. And the toy cabinet on the side of the tree also grew very large. So the whole entire army of little toy soldiers marched out of the cabinet that the Nutcracker Prince was leading. And he was saying, let's get rid of the mice. Let's scare the mice away. <clears throat> and as the Nutcracker was just standing here, let me just draw him here. He was bravely just protecting Clara. He's just, let's make him face this way. He was with his wonderful teeth that he has. And the lovely hair. Maybe he has like a sword in his hand. He's telling, I will protect you, don't worry. He's just right there, lunging forward. Um, <coughs> the mice did run away, but there was another troublemaker that arrived. And that was the scary part, because this troublemaker was a king. He was no ordinary king. He was a scary, scary mouse king. And he had even scary teeth. And let's make him like, very like, what? What? You can't scare me. Nobody scares me. And he's just here. Like this. But the Nutcracker Prince says, I, I am not afraid of you. And 
the mosque king said, well, let's see about that. And he took out his sword and they were starting to really fight. And as the fight was getting very intense, Clara, who was hiding behind Nutcracker, now quickly had an idea. Since she knew about mice before, she heard that there was this thing called the mouse trap. So what she did was she quietly sneaked behind the mouse. And as the mouse's leg was reaching out to charge at the nutcracker like this, she slid a big old fashioned mouse trap that there's like a little winding thing and it slammed right let me just do it like boop 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 clash it slammed right on the mouse's leg and he was going oh my god oh my god what just happened to me no and all the mice went and dragged him away and they ran away and Clara was so happy she was just so happy that the scary mouse were gone but she was a little concerned because the nutcracker prince had suddenly fallen on the floor and and she it appeared like as if he was lifeless. He wasn't moving. He was just lying there on the floor. And, and that really scared Clara. So she was calling for Uncle Drossenmeyer. And Uncle Drossenmeyer arrived and she said, um, Please, Uncle Drossenmeyer, it appears that the Nutcracker doll is, has maybe died. And he was like, no, 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 no. I'll explain it to you what's happening here. So as he lifted up the Nutcracker doll that looked like this. <clears throat> so let's draw, let's draw like the Nutcracker. Again, let's just do it, beautiful life size. Of course, we start with the nose. We make a little lovely mustache. Excellent teeth. There we go. A little mustache here, a little beard. Nice, lovely. Let's make them dreamy eyes. Let's have a little dreamy eyes like this. Cheek right there. And a hat. He has that little star on his hat. The lovely hair that goes all the way down. And <clears throat> he has these little shoulder patches here. So Uncle Drossenmeyer stood up the Nutcracker doll and said, just hold on a second. This was supposed to happen. And Clara doesn't quite understand what's going on. Just to have his hands on the side. There we go. And Sarah backs, uh, <laughs> Clara, Clara backs away. And what happened next was really surprising because Uncle Drossenmeyer did a magic trick. And what happened was, with that magic trick,
the nutcracker head that was sort of large and had big teeth, it just disappeared. But who was underneath it? Well, who was underneath it was a handsome young prince. And Clara couldn't believe her eyes. But what she noticed was that when we talk about googly eyes, uh, like a lovely dreamy eyes, um, she noticed that he had the same eyes. And she, she was so surprised. She was saying, oh, it was you. It was you all along. You were just trapped inside that Nutcracker doll. And he said, yes. And you saved, saved me because the spell was cast by the Mouse King. And now you've defeated him and the spell is broken. And I can be the prince again. I can be human again. And she was very shy at first because he looked very different. But he said, don't you worry. Will you please come with me to the place where I live? And I can show you all the people who live have lived with me. And Clara said, sure. So they stored, stormed outside of their house. And what was extremely surprising was that it had started to snow. And Clara, obviously living in San Francisco, had never seen snow before. Or maybe seen a couple of times, but not at least in San Francisco. So as the prince was running with him, because he was so excited to just bring Clara along, and um, the, it appeared as if the snowflakes were dancing. And if you've ever seen the ballet, there is a big snow scene where the snowflakes are dancing and, and they, they sort of, they jump around and I can just draw you a little bit. They jump and do this beautiful ballet steps and they fly across the stage in this great speed and they're all jumping in a row and their little dresses look just like snowflakes that are just flying everywhere. And as they are passing this, uh, the snow um, scene, they came to a great beautiful palace. And this is the crystal palace palace where the Nutcracker Prince had grown up. And this palace had this, okay, let's use this blue pencil. Let's make this beautiful crystal palace with this lovely crystal arches. And let's make them like really magical. This, let's make some of the pillars here too. So it looks more like a crystal palace. <clears throat> and then as they arrived there, let me just draw the Clara again because we have miss we're missing Clara. She's been going through all of this incredible journey. We can't miss her. So she's here. And she's just so surprised and overjoyed because this has been a, such a magical evening for her. And she's still, by the way, wearing her, her nightgown. And as they arrived in the Crystal Palace, They meet somebody and they meet a fairy. And 
This fairy's name is Sugar Plum Fairy. I'm sure you've heard of Sugar Plum Fairy. Sugar Plum Fairy has been in charge of the Crystal Palace this whole entire time, and they have greatly missed Nutcracker. And she was so surprised to see Nutcracker there. And she said, where have you been? We have missed you so much. And Nutcracker said, oh, it's a great story. I need to tell you this. And she said, wait, 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 wait. Let me just invite the whole entire kingdom to hear this story. So now that we're talking about Sugar Plum Fairy, I think it's time to see what she looks like. So Sugar Plum Fairy is beautiful. There she is. She is always very graceful, well-dressed, well-mannered. And she wears a crown. Maybe she has some earrings, maybe she has some necklace. And her legs are always in a perfect ballet position. There we go. And let's make, we should make some special effort to make her tutu look really pretty. So let's just think of sugar plum, let's think of some lovely decorations here and there little little flowers let's make some a little bit more let's add some more flowers let's add some there we go Oh, she looks perfect. And Sugar Plum Fairy said, okay, Prince, Prince, please tell us the story. And the Prince was telling the whole entire kingdom of how Clara had saved him from the evil Mouse King and broken the spell. And now he's finally back to being human again. And, um, Everybody was so happy and wanted to celebrate Clara and Sugar Plum said, um, let's all dance for Clara. And all of the guests from all over the world danced for Clara and celebrated. And, um, and then the prince asked Clara, I said, Clara, would you, would you like to dance as well? Because you are the guest of honor. And Clara said, oh, but I... I don't have anything to wear. I'm, I'm just wearing this nightgown. And the sugar plum fairy said, hold on, hold on. We have a little something for you. And so they put, they ask her to go into this magic crystal cabinet that was sort of like this. And it had a magic door in front and lots and lots of mirrors on the inside. And this cabinet was, was sort of spinning around. And they said to Clara, you will see, you have, all you have to do is step inside this cabinet. And when you come out, you will be surprised. So Clara stepped inside this magic cabinet like this. And when she opened, when the sugar plum fairy opened the cabinet doors, Clara stepped out and she actually could not believe what had happened. Because now,
she. was wearing absolutely gorgeous dress. She had a tiara on her head. And she looked absolutely stunning. Let's make her a little bit prettier. It was a beautiful golden dress. Golden and I want to say it was something between like a gold and sort of bluish or teal. And because she had been practicing ballet, we told, talked about it before. So the Nutcracker Prince was really surprised how well uh, Clara danced. So they danced and danced and danced. And then finally, the whole entire kingdom was dancing around them and everybody was turning and jumping and joyously laughing and Clara started feeling sort of a little bit dizzy and she closed her eyes for a second. And when she opened her eyes, to her surprise, she was back in her living room. And the Nakraka doll was right next to her. And she couldn't believe it. It all had just been a really incredible magical dream. Or was it? That's the part that you have to find out. So I hope, I hope that you've enjoyed this. I, I'm really happy that I got to draw this, this little story for you. And um, I really hope that you get to see the, the Nutcracker Ballet, Nutcracker, uh, <laughs> San Francisco Ballet's Nutcracker that is right now online. And we have this wonderful virtual reality where you go into the theater and you can get to see all of this. And then you get to sit down in your own home and watch, maybe you wanna eat some popcorn or something and you get to watch it on the TV. And I guarantee you, it is really magical. And the story is so wonderful. And then you will probably get to find out whether this was a dream or maybe not. So, I'm going to leave you at this time, and I am really happy that you joined me for today's live stream. So have a great Christmas, and I can't wait to be back on a stage and dancing for you, and the whole entire San Francisco Ballet can't wait to do this. And, um, but we will see you all soon, and, and, and let's just keep hoping that this will be over soon. Have a great Christmas and great New Year's. Bye. I love you all.